Hi, I'm Lou. Another episode of My Car Story. I'm here with Terry. Terry. How do you do? What's your last name? Pisha. Terry Pisha. He's my friend. He drove me here today. We're at the Auburn Court Duesenberg Museum on this episode of My Car Story. And we're going to take a look at Terry's car. It's one of the first cars when you see a beautiful car. And you'll see that right now. Thank you, Sam. I'll grab the camera as I usually do. And uh, Terry, first of all, uh, your, tell me your position here with the museum. You do something uh, for the museum. I'm currently on the uh, collections committee. That's what we had a uh, committee meeting today. I had been a trustee of the museum in the past. And, and, and also a former president. A uh, president of the Auburn Court Duesenberg Club that, that works with at, the museum. Exactly, at one point. So come mm -hmm. on back. We're going to talk about your car as well as uh, uh, the history of it. So come on back with me. How did you come on over here for a second? Sure. We'll look right at it. What an amazing vehicle. So first of all, how did you, you know, how of all the cars in the world did you come up with a boat tail speedster? I think it was in the late 1980s. I came across an advertisement in Hemmings Motor News. It was a disassembled car at the time. <laughs> disassembled. And, right. Uh, so this is all in parts at one point. That's true. Out in uh, Ohio. I drove out to take a look at it. It was displayed in a two-car garage. All, all the mechanical parts spread out on the garage floor as they, like an exploded view. The body itself and frame were at a uh, paint shop about 20 miles away, went out and looked that over, was satisfied with it. I had a partner at the time that uh, invested in half of it with me. We brought it back to Illinois and while I assembled it, I didn't finish it mechanically for probably another 10, 12 years. It was only in the late 90s that I decided to go with a repaint in the same color as one of my other cars that you filmed before. Great, great color combination. And uh, used it on a couple of tours with the Auburn Court Duesenberg Club and the festival here in Auburn. Mm -hmm. We took a three-day tour prior to Labor Day reunion. And this has been on the road several times. I don't know how many years, maybe six or seven, the museum here was looking for one of these for the collection. And if they can't get them uh, themselves, if one isn't donated, they take a few cars and, on. And yours is certifi loan. certified by? Uh, well, at that time, Paul Bryant was the certification chairman for the club. And they go through the car completely and certify that it is what it claims to be. And in this case, that it was an original boat tail speedster. Wow. Let's go to one of the main attractions of the boat tail, which is the thing that I think most people always run to, which is the back of it. And here is the boat tail. And if that isn't spectacular for the time period, Terry, you, you called this car the 1930s what? It was an 8100A chassis and it was the boat tail speedster body. There is, this is basically a 32 Auburn underneath it all. The fenders, the hood, the cowl, uh, the grill shell are all on the four door the two-door or the uh, roadster body Auburn. The difference is the gas tank cover here and the boat tail itself and the doors, that is the extra item that the factory was delivered from the factory to different dealers around the country. The body was done by Union City Body Corporation on the east side of Indianapolis, mm -hmm. Indiana. Um, a little south of Fort Wayne, I believe. Okay. The Union City Turn body. with me, Terry. I want to get a straight on shot sure. while you're talking. Go ahead. Union City Body did custom coach work for a variety of companies, but they built this body for uh, the Auburn Company. And there were s a select number of these we put in dealer showrooms around the country. It was probably the Corvette of the 1930s. The Corvette of the 30s. That's what I was looking for. Uh, open the door, please, if you would. And this is a unique door. It's hinged at the back. The uh, upholstery is new as this last time uh, it was restored. Prior to that, while it, uh, it didn't have a finished interior when I bought it, I did have the bones of the car. I had the old original panels, still do as a matter of fact, and the seat of the roof, seats. And this is a panels. wonderful 
windshield line the way it angles back. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Those, uh, I have all those parts at home and they were used as patterns for this. So we're sure we've got it right. Uh, some Amish gentlemen in Napanee, Indiana did the uh, upholstery. And of course, I hadn't mentioned, but it was uh, Eric Levine of Levine Restorations, also in Napanee, that uh, did the repaint in the second assembly. Eric, we'll give you a shout out there. Great job on this vehicle. An interesting thing about this and th car. These are your windshield motors? These are the windshield wipers, yes. Okay. Vacuum operated. Is this clock in the mirror? Yes. Wow. That's, That's an aftermarket clock. Okay, all right. Still look cool. The, uh, well, a few things. Go ahead. To make it look like a race car. It's got knockoff hubs, which you'll see outside. Well, let's take a look at those. What is the on-off control here? Uh, this one right here. That should be, or is the center one for my two-spirit rear axle? Uh, that would just be lights. The center one, what does it say in the center? It says of that? Uh, high, yeah. low, water. That is the two-speed rear axle. Oh, really? Columbia rear end, and while it's three speeds on the floor, we can be in a high or a low range, so you can get six speeds forward. And gas and heat. Okay, let's take a look under the hood. That shows. Uh, I'll tell you what, just hold it up for a second. Okay, we're on the carburetor and manifold side. Uh, it's a straightforward eight cylinder Lycoming, much like the Lycoming engine in the L29. Slightly different displacement. It's it about uh, just under 300 cubic inches, about 125 horsepower car. And down here we've got. Uh, Carburation, or no, is mm -hmm. that carburation? Carburetor, fuel pump, asbestos, something that isn't used today, but an asbestos cover on the exhaust system. All right, let's take a look at the other side. Be careful with that. And while Terry's doing it, I'll just enjoy these headlamps with the metal down there. And, the, and these radiator vents open up with the temperature Terry was sharing with me. We've got a tire on this side. And an oiling system, a loop system, like a Berger system, they, uh, that is a, uh, that's automatically pumped out to the different grease fittings. Stardex ignition system that directly sends full power to the um, starter. And I don't know the best way of describing this. The car always wants to start itself. Okay. You may remember on one of the other cars. This was peculiar, commonly used on Auburn's Accords. If, you, if your car stalled, when it, the voltage dropped, uh, because the uh, engine wasn't turning over. It immediately told this and it restarted it. Really? Um, well, let's shut that. And Terry, we're going to have you stand right next to your gorgeous car. Hey, Terry, thanks again for being on My Car Story. You bet. So long, though.